Hi, welcome. In this video, we'll learn how to solve a competitive equilibrium when the utility function of individual 1 is x1 plus y1 and individual 2 lexicographically prefers x over y. So individual 2 prefers the bundle that offers him higher amount of x. If the two bundles offer him same amount of x, then he prefers the bundle that offers him higher amount of y. This is what you mean by lexicographic preference. Individual 1's endowment in this economy is 4 units of x and 8 units of y. Individual 2's endowment in this setup is 6 units of x and 4 units of y. So the total amount of x that are available in this economy is 10 units and the total amount of y that is available in this economy is 12 units. We'll now solve for the competitive equilibrium allocation and the prices in this economy. So we'll follow the following four step procedure. Step one will be to find the demand function. So demand function for individual one is the following. X1 D Y1 D is equal to M1 by PX comma zero if PX is less than PY. Here M1 denotes the income of individual one, PX denotes the price of X. So what we are saying is that if good X is cheaper, then the consumer one will spend all his money on commodity X. He's going to spend all his money on commodity Y if commodity Y is cheaper. And if it turns out that PX is equal to PY, both prices are the same, then he is indifferent between choosing any point on the budget line. Let's call it BL. So he can pick anything on the budget line if this is budget line of individual one, if PX is equal to PY. What is the demand function of individual 2? Individual 2's demand as a function of PX, PY and M2 is the following. Because he lexicographically prefers X over Y, whenever the prices are positive, income is positive, he's always going to choose to spend all his money on commodity X. So his demand is M2 by PX comma zero. So that means he'll buy M2 by PX units of X and zero units of Y. So we now know the demand, demand for individual one and the demand of individual two. Step two will be setting one of the commodities as numerator. So we are going to set commodity Y as a numerator. That means that we are going to take PY as one. Another thing is that we are going to replace the income of individual one by the value of his endowment and income of individual two by the value of two's endowment. Now what is the value of individual one's endowment? Individual one has four units of X and eight units of Y. Given that the price of X is PX and price of Y is one, the value of the endowment of individual one is four PX plus eight. 4 times px plus 8 times 1, that's the value of endowment of individual 1 and that's his income. Income of individual 2 is the value of endowment of individual 2 and that's given by 6 times px plus 4. Step 3 will be to rewrite the demand function of individual 1 and 2 by replacing the values of m1 and m2 by the respective value of the endowment and also replacing the value of PY by one. So let us now rewrite the demand here. X1 D Y1 D equals M1 by PX. Now what is M1 by PX? It is four PX plus eight by PX, which is four plus eight by PX. And what is Y1 D? And that's zero. This is a case if price of X is less than price of Y, which is one. Demand is equal to zero comma M1 by PY, where PY is one, so it is uh, simply zero comma M1 if PX is greater than one. And if PX is equal to one, then he can pick anything on his budget line. He is indifferent. Now let us write the demand function of individual two. So individual two 
will demand only x and his income is 6px plus 4. So the demand for x will be 6px plus 4 divided by px which is simply 6 plus 4 by px comma 0 irrespective of the price of x and price of y. So now we have written demand of individual 1 and 2 for x and y in terms of price of x. Step 4 will be to pick one of the markets, doesn't matter which one you choose, and solve for the equilibrium price of x by equating demand and supply. So let us consider market for x. Now we would be searching for our equilibrium at different different value of price of x. So based on the demand function of individual 1 we can divide this problem of search into three cases. One is we can look for an equilibrium in the range of price of x where price of x takes value less than 1. We can also search for an equilibrium price of x when price of x is greater than 1. And we can check if price of x equal to 1 is an equilibrium price or not. Okay, so case 1 is price of x less than 1. Case 2 is price of x greater than 1. Case 3 is price of x equals to 1. When price of x is less than 1, the aggregate demand for x is the demand for x by individual 1 plus the demand for x by individual 2. Let's add them up. So we're going to get 10 plus 12 by px. What is the supply of x? So the supply of x is 6 plus 4, 10. Clearly, no matter what value of px you want to pick, less than 1, demand for x will always be greater than the supply. So there is no price of x less than 1 at which we can have equilibrium. Now let's consider px greater than 1. When px is greater than 1, individual 1 demands 0 units of x. And individual 2 demands 6 plus 4 by px units of x. So the aggregate demand for x will be 6 plus 4 by px. Since px is greater than 1, 4 by px will be less than 4. So this sum will always be less than 10. Again, we do not have an equilibrium when px is greater than 1. Okay, so now let's consider the last case when px is equal to 1. When px is equal to 1, individual 1 doesn't care. He can choose anything on his budget line. So let's look at what will individual 2 pick when px is equal to 1. When px is equal to 1, individual 2 will pick 10 units of x. Well, that's precisely equal to the supply of x. So that would mean that if individual 1 picks 0 units of x, then we are in equilibrium. So we have found that at px equals to 1 and py equals to 1, we have a competitive equilibrium. Let us now write the competitive equilibrium prices and allocation as a final solution here. So the equilibrium prices are px star py star equal to 1, 1. And the competitive equilibrium allocation is x1 star, y1 star, x2 star, y2 star equal to, so individual 2 consumes 10 units of x and 0 units of y. So x2 star is 10, y2 star is 0. And individual 1 consumes the residual, which is 0 units of x, 12 units of y. So we have found the competitive equilibrium here. Thank you.